Out of all the resources you need to be able to have your vehicle in a place like this for a longer period of time, we believe water is the most important resource of them all. Electricity we can charge because of nowadays technical advancements. Gas we can store for a really long time because it's so compact. But water, in our experience, is the first resource you're gonna run out of. It was always because of the water that we have to leave a spot or go somewhere because we had to refill the water. So I figured, well, the more we can postpone that, you know, the more we, the water we can carry with us, the longer we can be at a, at a certain place. So that was kind of the idea of getting this huge massive tank. So this here is our 850 liter water tank and this here is our water management system. From here it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So let's see if we can find something to, to show what is going on in our water management system. That's the pump. Also, we made a big mistake when it comes to our water system. I'll tell you that later so hopefully you can learn from our mistake. Different names to justify the ownership. Rules are still the same. Chances we don't get, but still we show showing love to everyone that's. Ah! At the river, nothing's gonna be the same. Took us away, but karma has a different game plan. Yeah, till this day we have a slave man. You don't see it in the news. Okay, so this here resembles our 850 liter water tank. How do we get water in there? We hook up our water at this free filter. What that does is it removes sediment like sand, small rocks, but maybe also harmful stuff like metal residue or whatnot. This particular product uh, has a 100 micron mess, but we bought one that is 25, so a bit smaller. And the nice thing about this pre-filter is that you can rinse it now and then to clean it so you can reuse it. After the pre-filter, the water enters the vehicle and enters the next filter. A 10 micron sediment filter and an active carbon filter. Filtering water can be a whole subject on its own. In the description below, you can find some resources on or filtering water. That helped us a lot when choosing our filters. So after these two filters, the water finally enters the water tank. The inlet is located at the bottom side of the tank. So yes, the water has to push up the water in the water tank. And I was a bit nervous at first because I had no idea how much pressure it needs to push the water up. Turns out it's not a big deal whatsoever. You can basically fill a 20 meter high water tank before you run into pressure problems. You can find calculators online for this. Here is where our water system becomes interesting. Before entering the water tank, the water goes through a three-way split, each with a ball valve. One controls the water inlet side, one controls the water tank side, and one controls the water pump, plus all the appliances that follow behind. This allows for interesting scenarios on how to use this particular water system. I will tell you about that later. So let's see what's on the water pump side of this three-way section. First, we have the diaphragm pump. This senses when the pressure uh, in the water system drops, also known as when you use water. And it will turn on until a certain pressure point is met. You can adjust this point by turning the adjustment screw clockwise or counterclockwise. This turned out to be crucial in our water system. Right next to the pump is an expansion vessel. This creates a nice flow of water and helps with the lifespan of your water pump. Then this cold water splits up. One goes to the inlet of the hot water geyser, or instant heater. One goes to the cold tap on the outer shower. One goes to the cold tap on the indoor shower. And right before that it splits up again so that one can go to the cold kitchen tap. Let's see where the hot water goes. These sticks resemble the hot water lines. After being heated to around 60 degrees Celsius, the hot water splits up and goes to the hot tap on the outdoor shower, the hot tap on the indoor shower, the washing machine, the hot kitchen tap, and one goes to the dishwasher. So the dishwasher and the washing machine have only one inlet. 
and they do the heavy lifting when it comes to creating warm water themselves using electricity. To help save a little bit of electricity, we opted to give these machines hot water already from the instant heater. So here you have it, an overview by rocks and twigs of our water system. Okay, so the big mistake I was talking about in the beginning of the video was that, well, when you want to connect this entire system, you need to choose a specific hose uh, or pipes to connect them all. With that comes uh, the connections of the pipe or the hose. Well, we chose like these 30 millimeter uh, tubes, which they use in marine appliances. But to connect these flexible hoses that we have, we need a system uh, that uses uh, pillars and threads. Um, and these Jubilee clips to get the hoses on. Even though we tried our best tightening them as much as we could, also using Loctite, still it's not really solid. And then with these Jubilee clips, the problems with these is when you screw them tight, they become a little bit oval. Oval. So it leaves room for water to escape. Now finally our system is watertight But it was a huge pain in the ass to get it this way and when I learned about the system where you simply Plug the water pipes in the connections. I Cried a little bit from the inside. So tip number one is be smarter than us and use a system like John Guest or at least think twice about how you're gonna connect your water system. We have a love-hate relationship when it comes to our instant water heater. The good thing is that we have instant and limited hot water, until the tank runs dry that is. But the bad thing is that so the flue pipe needs a certain length to create a certain draft for all the gases to leave the system properly. Because we didn't have space for this, thus we installed it wrong, uh, the sensor would constantly uh, shut down the water system, so we had to bypass this, which isn't optimal. Yeah, luckily for us it's in a separated room uh, Which is separated from the living room, so I guess it's okay. And although it's an instant heater It takes a while for the water to heat up and finds its way all the way to the other side of the van So I barely use the hot water in the kitchen tap because you just waste a lot of water. So tip number two is well, maybe consider a boiler. Maybe these things aren't so bad after all. But on the other side, I mean, we got it working. It's not optimal, but yeah, we do have unlimited hot water right now. So, yeah. And tip number three would be to really uh, fiddle around with the um, adjustment screw on your water pump. Because this can really make the difference between an in irregular flow uh, of water and a constant stream of water. So I told you about the different scenarios we uh, can do with this water setup. The first one is, if we want to fill the tank, we open the inlet valve and close the water pump valve. And when we're done filling the tank, we close the inlet valve again and open the water pump valve. Scenario number two is when we want to stay uh, hooked up on water, let's say for a longer period of time, on a campsite or whatever. Um, now we can close the tank valve uh, we open the inlet valve when we open the water pump valve uh, and now we directly have water from whatever water source we're using. And for scenario number three we can use this pump thing which we can hook up with this drill. Um, we cannot empty our tank completely uh, via gravity but in theory by attaching this to the water system we can just pump our uh, tank dry. Also in theory we can invert this uh, and now we can fill the tank with, well, whatever source we can find. We haven't tried it out yet, but we'll let you know in the future when we have. So I hope this was helpful. Comments down below if you have any questions. Consider subscribing and see you in the next one.